Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel Peterisms where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I have learned as I have grown into the person that I am today. And I brought with me today A Year of Positive Thinking, my new meditation book. But I also brought the Melody Beatty ones with me too because I love these so much. Um, the Language of Letting Go and Journey to the Heart. This one is the sister book to Codependent No More and Beyond Codependency. You guys know I love these books. So, I don't know, we might have to read them again this year and um, see if they change for us, you know? Well, I thought I brought my um, reading glasses, but I'm, I'm like feeling, I guess I didn't bring my reading glasses. Anyway, all right, let's get into today's meditation from A Year of Positive Thinking. January 21st, the capacity to forgive. We must develop and maintain the capacity to forgive. He who, he who is devoid of the power to forgive is devoid of the power to love. There is some good in the worst of us and some evil in the best of us. When we discover this, we are less prone to hate our enemies. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, and it's just the quote. They don't have anything else uh, today for that. I love that quote, you know, and forgiveness is something. Is that Boo Radley? I think that's Boo Radley and not Tucker today. Hey, Boo Radley. Um, I love that quote so much, and I love having discussions about forgiveness. I think that forgiveness is kind of like this idea that we all believe in, but we really don't know how to do sometimes. And um, I know that there have been a lot of situations in my life where I have wanted to be forgiven for things. I think you know, it's a dichotomy because when people are wanting forgiveness from us or when we feel like we should give forgiveness to other people, it's kind of like, wow, that's really hard to do. Like, I feel really hurt. I feel really betrayed. I feel like you wronged me or you did something wrong, right? So it's hard. But when we're in the other, when we're in somebody else's shoes, you know, like Atticus Finch shut in To Kill Mockingbird, you know, sometimes you have to walk around in somebody else's shoes on their front porch for a while. When you're on the other side of that, right? And you're asking to be forgiven um, because you, you know, want to a relationship or you want to show this person that you're a different person today or that you you are working on trying to change and grow and and become better and learn from your mistakes then it's kind of a different situation isn't it but I've always been taught and I am a believer that forgiveness is really for us not for the other person and I'm talking about when we forgive them so I'm just gonna address that today there is a quote <laughs> an aha moment by Oprah that I love so much. And, and I talk about it over here a lot. There's actually two that kind of go along together. Um, you know, for me, the, the dogs are in the background pushing their, their food plates around. Boo Radley is actually right here running around. Boo Radley, you wanna come over here and be in the video? He's, come on, you can jump over. Come on, buddy. Come on, come over here. He's looking at me like, I wanna be in the video, but you gotta pick me up first. Come, why are you being so silly? Come on. You wanna be in the video? They said, we both want to be in the video today, Dad. You guys have had so much fun today, haven't you? Running around in the yard and chasing each other. We just had dinner, didn't you? They said, yep, we just had dinner and we smell like dinner. So anyway, um, I love the concept where Oprah talks about um, when we, like our expectations. Now, I, I've recently just talked about this on here, but this is something that has been probably one of my greatest learning experiences in life, right? is that I am a person that, as in recovery, okay, the addicts and alcoholics, like we discuss resentments a lot. And I have been taught that a resentment is an unfulfilled expectation. That when I feel that someone should have acted a certain way and they didn't, or they fell short of that, or when a situation didn't turn out the way that I wanted it to, then I have anger associated with that. I have resentment, I hold a grudge, right? And in recovery, we say that resentments are the number one offender. Like those are the things that are going to get us back to drinking and drugging the quick, quickest, right? But I think for anybody in life, like resentments are the thing that are going to hold us back the most from emotional growth because we stay so stuck, we stay so stuck in anger, right? It's like when we allow people to rent space in our heads for free, it's like we are constantly thinking about what that other person is doing or saying or did say or did to us and they have moved on with their life and they aren't even conscious or aware and yet we're still the ones that are suffering as a result of what those people did to us a week ago, six months ago, five years ago, 10 years ago. I mean, some of us hold on to resentments for really long periods of time. And when I got sober, I realized I had resentments that went way back. And I got sober at 22 and a half, you know? So imagine friends of mine that have gotten sober at 40, 50, 60, and 70, they have lifelong resentments, you know? 
of the ways that we thought people should have treated us. And, and some of them are appropriate. Some of them are justifiable, you know? Yes, this person should, yes. I think that we have a right to think that our mothers and our fathers and people in our lives should treat us a certain way. That doesn't mean that they're going to, but I think that we have a right for that. Those, that's called justifiable anger sometimes, right? But it doesn't really help us a whole lot. So when I first saw this one Oprah and she was talking about um, that, like, she, she had expectations that were too high for people, which having expectations, like I said, leads to resentments. This guy said to her on there, you know, it's when you expect gallon-sized love from a pint-sized person. And she goes, I, I don't know what do you mean. And he's like, you're expecting this person to have, like, gallon-sized love, but they only have pint-sized love to give. They don't have it to give you. Like, they never will, no matter how much you want it, no matter how much you expect it. They're never going to be able to give it to you. And it was such an aha moment for me. I was like, oh my god, I have, like, known so many people like that in my life that, like, what I expected them to do or to be able to give in a relationship, it wasn't because they were a bad person. It wasn't because whatever. It's like maybe they were emotionally stunted. Maybe I was at some point in my life that I didn't wasn't able to give somebody what they needed, you know? Maybe I was pint-sized love at some point, you know? Or maybe I just didn't care about that person on the same level they cared about me. Or maybe they didn't care about me on the same level that I cared about them. No matter what, it's what I expected they weren't able to match, okay? And therefore, what was created was a resentment. And a resentment just keeps on getting at you and nagging at you and nagging at you and nagging at you until you can't let go of it, right? So then she talks about forgiveness. And I love, love, love Oprah's definition of how to, you know, what forgiveness is. And, she, and I, I have it written down in my phone verbatim, and I'm uploading a video on my phone or I would read it to you. She says that forgiveness is letting go of what happened in the past, okay? Not that what happened was okay. So it's taking some event that occurred, either somebody that something that, that happened to us by that person, our resentment towards them, or a situation that didn't occur the way that we thought it should. It's letting go of the idea, okay, that, of, of that, accepting that, that it happened. We can't do anything about it now. We can't go back and change it. It happened. Happened. Not saying that what happened is all right. It, like, I think sometimes we think acceptance is saying, hey, I accept it. It's what happened. Like, I always say, like, <laughs> when acceptance ever comes up in meetings as a topic, I always say, like, I've always kind of struggled with the idea of, like, wh wh what's our alternative to acceptance? Like, I mean, he, you could not accept something and say, I refuse to accept this, right? But, like, it's just going to continue to happen in your life, like, whether you accept it or not. Acceptance is acknowledging, okay? It's acknowledgement of what happened, not saying that what happened was okay, right, you deserved it, none of that. It's saying that what happened happened. And when we can do that sometimes, it's like, because have you ever played stuff over in your head where you're like, well, I don't understand this and I didn't deserve that and why did this happen and why did they do this and why did they do that? And we play that over in our head and over our head. It's taking all of that, throwing it in the trash and saying it happened, okay? It happened, we can't do anything about it and now what are we gonna do with it? What are we going to do with what happened to it? And that, that right there is the piece to freedom. That is where forgiveness is so, so powerful to me, okay? For people in my life that like, you know, let's just take it into my long time ago, right? People in my, like, like, like my mother, right? Like when I look at a lot of the things that happened and my issues with my mom or, you know, like her passing out or her not being, you know, at something that I wanted her to be at or her being a, a, a alert enough because she had been drinking and she was drunk, right? Like I can look at that situation and say, that wasn't right. I deserved better than that when I was a child. She would have acknowledged, I mean, she did acknowledge that, that I deserved better of that as a child, right? But it happened. Now what am I going to do with it? Well, my mother was a sick alcoholic at the time. And that is no excuse. That doesn't take away from it. That doesn't mean that I deserved it. That doesn't mean that it's okay. It means that's the truth. That's what happened. Now, I'm lucky because my mother got sober. So I was able to, after that, see the growth and the change occur in her that she wanted redemption for that, right? And I was able to give that to her. Why wouldn't I, you know? And I know there's a lot of people that can't. But I don't want to stay, you know, like Oprah says, re references the word hostage. I don't want to stay hostage to crap that happened to me in my past that people did that they aren't even aware of today. So if I can forgive them and say, you know what? I release you of the need to be in my life anymore. I let this go and I'm going to pray on it and I'm going to let it go, right? Like that's what I do with it today. Like I don't, I look at situations that have happened to me in the past and I think to myself, like, first of all, have you ever like 
made such a big deal of something at the time. I mean, if you're older, this will be easier because we've had enough time go by. But, like, have you ever, like, had something happen at the time and then you look back on it? It's like, okay, my very first breakup that ever happened with, like, a long-term boyfriend. I look back on that. I was devastated at the time. You know, I was hurt. I felt betrayed. I mean, he looked at me and said, I'm not in love with you anymore, you know? I, I just was like, I felt like all the air left the room. And I look back on that now and I really think that was a gift. You know, I, mean, I didn't get that at the time. I didn't get that two years later. I didn't get that five years later. But I look at it now and I think that was a gift. You know, he was able to be honest enough with me. Hell, there are a lot of people that stay in marriages and relationships that aren't in love anymore. And they do it just because they don't want to get out. And then they cheat and they hurt each other and whatever. Thank God I didn't have to go through that. You know, he got out. I got in another relationship that was amazing for a while. And then we got out of that relationship. And now I'm married to my husband, which I wouldn't have met had it not been for that. So things work themselves out sometimes, and I can acknowledge that and I can see that today, you know? I can see how it all plays out. But I have to be willing to forgive people too, you know? I have to be willing to say, you know what, we're all human, we make mistakes. Now there are some things that I think that are unforgivable and are unforgettable, but in our hearts, that's where it goes back to that accepting. Forgiveness is accepting that and saying, now what are you gonna do with it, you know? Stop holding yourself hostage. You deserve better. You deserve better, right? And if it's something that is very serious or something that you can't get over or you, you've worked on it for a long time and you don't know what to do with it, um, you know, like a lot of people like say, you know, like, oh, you say stuff about your sponsor and blah, 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 blah. I am a firm believer in outside help, okay? And that, and I'm talking about counselors, psychiatrists, psych psychologists, therapists, uh, life coaches, on and on and on. I've gone to them. I believe in them. You know that there are times that we need to sit down and talk to somebody about those things because there are things that are just too hard and too deep that we can't just get over, you know? And I'm not a believer in that anyway. I'm a believer that we work through those things. So please seek somebody out to talk to if you need that, you know? But yeah, we shouldn't have to be a hostage to those things that happen to us in our past anymore, you know? And not everything that happens, like my friend Tanya and I talked about this all the time. We talk about this all the time, that not everything that happened to us in our life is a learning experience, you know? Don't throw me some really hardcore crap that happened to me that was really hurtful in my life and go, well, it was a learning experience for you. Well, I think I maybe would rather not have had it to go through it in the first place. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I learned some valuable lessons through it, but maybe I didn't want to go through what that was. It was too painful. It was too hard. You know, it's like I've learned a lot from being bullied for 12 years straight in school. I've learned a lot. I am the person that I am today to some degree having gone through that. But would I go through it again or would I go through 12 years of elementary, kindergarten, elementary, junior high and high school to go all through that and not be bullied and have an amazing childhood experience? Oh, no, I think I would prefer the latter. Thank you. You know, I think I would prefer to go through and have friends and not be lonely and not be bullied okay I, I can refuse I can learn there's another lesson out there for me to learn you know what I mean but anyway so let me know what you think about that uh meditation in the comment section below I love you guys and I will see you tomorrow bye